Peace, brothers and sisters. This is Dr. Siddiqui Chebaye, and I'd like to thank each and every one of you for viewing my past uh, videos. I took a leave of absence for a couple months, and now I'm back on the scene. And I will continue to give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to uplift your consciousness to a higher level. In other words, I'll be giving you raw food for thought. Today, I would like to uh, share with you the difference between disenfranchisement and enfranchisement. As you know, en enfranchisement is given the ability to exercise your rights. Disenfranchisement means taking away your rights. Taking away your rights. So where do we fit in as a people, as people of African descent? Where do we fit in? Where we fit in today is that we are disenfranchised. Our rights were definitely taken from us. And we must do all that we can to take our position back as far as exercising our rights as the original people. Now we need to know who took our rights from us. Well, these cave people, these people who was up in the caves acting like wild animals, very uncivilized, they came down from the mountains and they stepped right into heaven. And guess who was there? We were there, the people of African de descent. And they didn't like that. You know, we shared with them. We taught them civilization. We taught them how, we taught them health, you know, because some of them didn't bathe, bathe but once a year. Whoa, that, that's something else, man. Think about that. Once a year or even once a month is bad enough. But we taught them how to uh, wear underwear. <laughs> we did it all. Taught them how to speak because they was grunting and snorting, uh, you know, like crazy coming uh, from those mountains. But we gave them civilization. And once they sized us up, what did they do? They devised a strategy to disenfranchise us, to take away our rights. And how did they do that? Well, they did it by creating bogus laws. But before they did that, you know, they um, had all of these kind of uh, fake out moves, you know, with religion. And they had a gun in one hand and a holy book uh, in the other hand. And before you know it, we had the, uh, we had the book and they kept the gun and everything that we had. Look at us now. It's not a good scene. It's not uh, positive. It's not progressive. Again, because they created these bogus laws after they sized us up. And the intimidation along with it may cause us to feel like we're not even a part of anything. We have no power. And that's why a lot of us are scrambling today with what's going on. If my energy is vibrating at a certain level and everything under, the, everything under that can't touch me, viruses, none of that stuff. I'm too godly. I'm too much up there. My energy is vibrating too high for them. But guess what? They don't even like that. I don't care what they like. What I do care is to make sure that I'm honoring and representing the ancestors. Because in reality, we are the ancestors having a human experience. So we must transform our energy into connecting with the spiritual ancestors so they can lead God, direct, and protect us while we are here. See, I like to always speak in terms of cause and effect, you know, universal laws that applies to everybody. No one is exempt. When you feel, and they made us feel like we are second-class citizens, when you feel like a second-class citizen, what does it cause you to do? What kind of frame of mind are you entertaining at that point? And we are thinking uh, entertaining thoughts of impotence, 
uh, uh, not important, uh, uh, oppress, suppress, depress, press. We are pressed up. And we must come out of it, brothers and sisters, and be the godly people that we truly are. Not only do we feel all those pressed, we feel in prison, incarcerated, impotence. Uh, we feel kind of pa passivity, uh, defensive. All of those things, brothers and sisters, that we must come out of because it was thrust into us by them tampering with our souls, which changed our whole reality. And I'm talking about cause and effect. I know that people say, I heard this before, but it doesn't matter who you are, what you have, everybody need reminders, including myself. So as I speak to you, I'm reminding myself, which is a beautiful thing. Say what you mean and mean what you say. We must understand, must understand that we have accepted this craziness as the norm. We got to come up out of that. What's normal about catching hell? There's nothing normal about catching hell, but some of us are addicted to those energies. So we say, oh, well, that's just life. No, that's just your life. That's not life. That's hell. And we must join forces. This is a golden opportunity to do that in these quiet moments. The creator doesn't make mistakes. So we have to take full advantage of the, the quiet, quiet time to unify and to regenerate our reality, which is godly. We must exercise the universal law of cause and effect. If you don't like the effect, then we have the ability to change the cause. It's just that simple. But we are so spooked up, the simple things we are always suspicious of because we've been living a rough life for so long. But we must come out of it, brothers and sisters. Words along with emotions is power. So we have to be careful. The words that come out of our mouth because it represents power. It's a magnet. It goes out and brings to you what you sent out there, but it brings it back multiplied. So brothers and sisters, we must join forces once again to honor and represent our creator and our ancestors. Keep your lights on and keep them bright at all times. And also, do your best.